I ask that you turn your Bibles to Philippians 3. Philippians 3. Philippians 3, starting with verse 17 to the end of the chapter. And as you get it, will you please stand as we read God's word, if you're able. Philippians 3, beginning with verse 17 to the end of the chapter 21. And the Bible says, Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an ensample. For many walk of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who should change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto him. Let's turn to hymnals to 386. 386. And we are going to forego the shaking of hands this morning because of sickness. But we do have Grandpa and Grandma Estes with us. We have Ryan with us. We have Maria and Jake with us. We have Carrie's friend, huh? Carly. Carly, and help me, Pastor. Which right behind Ryan. Sorry, buddy. I forgot your name. It's old age. I forgot your name. So anyhow, wish him uh, later on. But let's uh, stand. Three eighty six. Revive us again. Yeah. <clears throat> Fifty-two. To God be the glory. What a great song. To God be the glory. Sin and 
great things he hath done. O perfect redemption, the purchase of blood to every believer, the promise of God, the vileless offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear His voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the special this morning it's going to be Rhonda and on the back of your notes in your bulletin is the words for Rhonda's song now she really doesn't want us to sing it but we can follow along if we don't don't know the words so uh, if you can find your slip for the notes uh, the words for Rhonda's song is in there
We're back in Hebrews chapter 13. We'll be looking at verses 7 and 8. Hebrews 13, 7 and 8. And when you've found that, if you're able, please stand as the word of God is read. What I would ask us to do today is read this in unison. It looks like most everybody has it now, so reading together, Hebrews 13, 7 and 8. Remember them which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow. Considering the end of their conversation, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Father, thank you for your precious word and for Jesus Christ, who is the same, who is changeless. I do pray that as we open your word today and look at the faith, that you would increase our faith, that you would stabilize our faith, that you would encourage us in the faith. And if there's someone here today that needs to put their faith in Jesus for salvation, that you'll give them the faith to believe. I pray, Father, that this will be a day where we go from here and say, it's been good to be in the house of the Lord. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. As we've been going through the book of Hebrews, one of the things that has been a constant theme is the writer has been trying to encourage people to really have a genuine faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and to persevere in that faith. There were some who had accepted the claims of the gospel of Jesus Christ mentally, intellectually, but it really hadn't hit home to their heart. And they were in danger of apostatizing or being apostates, confessing it with their mouth, but not really accepting it and eventually turning away from that truth. As well, there were Christians who may have genuinely received the Lord as their Savior, but then did not or would not continue to progress in that faith. And we know many believers who, who have trusted in Christ as Savior and are genuinely saved, but they really don't go much. They don't grow. And some of them, they stop going to church, they stop reading their Bibles, they stop walking with the Lord, and some of them you can't even tell if they're genuine believers or not, and some of them even begin to question their own salvation because they do not persevere in that faith. As we come to this section here, the writer encourages them in a way to uh, follow some examples of faith to help keep their faith stable. And so today you should use biblical leaders' examples of faith to help keep your faith stable. And we're going to look at some ways as we look at this passage of Scripture Notice the first word that he uses, remember. He says, remember them which have the rule over you. Now, there is a sense in which uh, this rule, and it's going to be used later in the chapter, where it's talking about those who have uh, the, the management over them who actually have a position of authority and uh, use that authority in directing them. But really, as it's used here, it's the thought of those who are leaders. He's talking about their spiritual leaders, those who have been their guides and their directors in the faith. 
And the word remember means to call this back to mind, to recall the faith and faithfulness of past biblical leaders. Now, I'm using the word past here because as we continue in the passage, there's an indication that he's talking specifically about those that had been there before and perhaps were no longer even alive. And we'll look at that later as we get to uh, verse 7 at the last part of the verse. But um, this could include any spiritual leaders. Some of them may not have actually died. There are some that believe that he, he doesn't give specific names, that he may have been referring to former leaders in the church that had become martyrs, such as James, and uh, perhaps even referring to those that were referred to in chapter 11, but other kinds of spiritual leaders that were no longer with them. Perhaps they were alive. I've had spiritual leaders that are no longer with me. My primary spiritual leader as I was growing up was my father. And he is one who has gone into the presence of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But he was a sound biblical teacher. Now, do I agree with everything that he agreed with at this point in my life. No, there's a few differences, but overall, we're pretty much on the same track. And uh, I tell you what, he was an encouragement to me. I've been fortunate enough to have several spiritual leaders, uh, Sunday school teachers. My own father as a father, and not just as my pastor. I've had some good pastors in churches, Dr. Jack Jacobs now with the Lord, uh, Pastor Allen, I think he's still alive and serving the Lord, Pastor Hoag, he's, uh, he's alive, uh, right now he's physically not able to be in the ministry, and, uh, but uh, his assistant, Pastor Don Bartimus, uh, Pastor Jack Jacobs I mentioned, and Mark uh, Jackson, were very influential in my life and before I was directed to the ministry. Uh, yeah, if, not only them, but perhaps you have spiritual leaders like I have had. Perhaps you got to go to some sort of Christian school and had spiritual leaders there, teachers there who taught you the truth. Uh, I, I remember quite a few of my professors at Faith Baptist Bible College, some of them now with the Lord, several of them with the Lord. I'm in the older generation now. They've got a lot of new professors that weren't there when I was there. Uh, some of them still alive. Dr. Dom, uh, Domikos, Bob Domikos, still there, not teaching anymore, but he's mowing the grass at Faith Baptist Bible College. But these people, uh, he says, recall them to mind their faith and faithfulness. Now, specifically, he said to call to mind those who are walking in the faith. Recall how their faith came from the true word of God. Remember them which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God. Now, the reason they speak unto you and teach you those things is because they have received that for themselves. And they have a faith that came from the true word of God. They are sharing a faith personally, or have shared a faith personally, that they got from God's word. And they not only got their faith from the word of God, but they recall, uh, recall how their faith communicated the true word of God. I would just, uh, like I say, blessed by good pastors and Bible teachers that would just take the word of God and open it up and and show you exactly what the Word of God said. And that was their message. And they said, this is the message you ought to give. Now, there are various kinds of applications that can be made throughout time, but they made sure and expounded the truth of God's Word. 
It's an important thing for the ones who are the spiritual leaders, the spiritual teachers, that they uh, have a faith that's built on the Word of God and that communicates the Word of God. I remember a dear pastor, and I, I believe he's home with the Lord now too, that was in the Des Moines area. His name was Pastor Ezel Wiggins. He was a black pastor and had a black church there. And uh, he was speaking to us preacher boys at Faith Baptist Bible College, and uh, he was explaining how he got into uh, the ministry, and he said, uh, you know, he started out preaching, I think, when he was around 12 years old. That's uh, the way it just worked back then. But uh, he had a style of preaching, and then he said, one day I heard a man preach, and he wasn't yelling or anything like that, but he was just opening the Word of God and just making its truths known. And he said, I was... Just so touched by that and so blessed by that, he said, that's the way that I want to preach. And from that moment on, it changed the way he communicated in his messages. And he realized that it was his responsibility to open the Word of God and just share the Word. And he was a wonderful uh, preacher who expounded the Word Listen, consciously recall good Bible leaders, whether it be pastors, Sunday school teachers, fathers, mothers in the home, Bible study leaders. Recall those leaders and how they had a faith and stuck to that faith and communicated that faith to others so that that faith could continue in the lives of other people. Have you been blessed with good spiritual leaders? Recall them to mind, and it will help to encourage you to remain stable, to persevere in your own faith. Hey, if you haven't had many of those, there are other ways that you can uh, recall past spiritual leaders. Maybe they weren't your own personal leaders. There have been spiritual leaders throughout our history that you can go and, and recall that, and one of the ways you can do that is to get some good books on some spiritual leaders who were giants in the faith and read their testimonies and about their lives, their biographies, and the messages that they gave uh, and uh, the teaching that they gave. And look at those past spiritual leaders to gain encouragement in your own spiritual walk. He goes on and states, whose faith follow. The idea is, in the word of the Greek, to mimic. In other words, replicate the faith and faithfulness of those past biblical leaders continue their biblical beliefs. If they had biblical beliefs, you ought to continue those beliefs because they're biblical. They're true. They're right. And therefore, those beliefs ought to be continued. It shouldn't stop at those past leaders. It should continue in your life. Not only what they believe, but also how they behave. Copy their biblical behaviors. You see, the things that you believe, and we just discussed this in our adult Sunday school class this morning, the things that you believe will affect the way that you behave. And it's important that you not only believe the truth of the scripture, but that it becomes something that is effective in your life and applies to you in the way that you live. Uh, the Apostle Paul spoke of this as we go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. He says, Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. So if those leaders have been following Christ, then it is appropriate to follow their example because they're following the example of Jesus Christ. 
we see it again in the book of Philippians chapter 3. And uh, verse 17 and 20 especially, I want to look at this morning. This passage was read for you this morning. He says, brethren, be followers together of me. And mark them which walk, so as ye have us for an example or an example. Pay attention to those that live in the same way, teach and live in the same way as we have done, and you have that example, for our conversation is in heaven. Our conduct, our way of life is in heaven from whence we also look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. So as long as they are living for the Lord Jesus Christ and for his glory and walking according to these truths of God's scripture, their behavior ought to be copied. Have you ever noticed that children often mimic their parents? Now, I haven't looked up yet, but my son is probably rolling his eyes, saying, oh, God forbid that I would mimic my dad. Someone, I think, just said he was sort of mimicking him in a little way. But uh, there's, there's a problem with that. Have you noticed that oftentimes the children mimic the worst behaviors of the parents. Have you ever noticed that, parents? If you're going to mimic me, why don't you mimic the good stuff? And they may be saying, well, what good stuff? But they do. They mimic their parents. Have you noticed that? What the writer is saying is we ought to mimic we ought to imitate, we ought to copy the faith and the faithfulness of these godly biblical leaders of the past. Set a good and godly example of faith. You know, that's important for those who are in my position, those who are Sunday school teachers, those who are Bible teachers. We ought to set an example that people can follow. I hope and I pray and I pray constantly that I will become more and more like Jesus Christ and that I will reflect Jesus Christ in my life. And I hope and pray that I can be an example that you ought to and can follow in order to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ in the things that I teach and the things that I believe and in the way that I behave. It's not only important for us pastors and Bible teachers, it's important for you spiritual leaders in the home. Mm. Now we're getting down to where the rubber meets the road, aren't we? Yes, you are spiritual leaders in your home, or you ought to be. You parents, grandparents. You know those grandkids look up to you grandparents in a way that's sort of special. Are you being the kind of spiritual example that you ought to be to your grandkids? On and on we could go. Not only set that example, but also only follow biblical leaders of faith. Biblical leaders of faith. There are tons of churches out there that people can attend, but I tell you, there are not that many churches that have biblical leaders anymore. Unfortunately, and I'm not just trying to be mean. That's just the truth of the matter. There are a lot of churches where the word of God is not being shared the way it ought to be shared. The faith is not being passed on the way it ought to be passed on. They are not examples that can and should be followed. 
So don't go to those churches. Find spiritual leaders that will be true to the faith and faithful to the Savior and, and to the truth. But they may not be as big of a church. So what are you looking for, size or truth? Size or obedience? I tell you what, if a bunch of people would go, go to the church where they are preaching and practicing the truth and have examples they could follow, then the church would grow, right? More people coming, church growing, bigger church. Thirdly, reflect on the faith and faithfulness of past leaders. He goes on considering the end of their conversation. That word to consider means to look at it and mull it over, to reflect on this, to gain all that you can, to really look into this. And he says, you ought to consider the end, or the exit is the word, the leaving of their way of life. And this is where we get the idea that he was probably, at that point, speaking of those who had perhaps even been martyred, but were no longer alive. As you reflect on their faith and faithfulness, reflect on how biblical faith controlled them in their living. As you think of that, you can see that their life was led by good biblical beliefs. That was what guided their life. That is what gave them instruction. That is the foundation of how they were to live. They were led by the word of God. And their life was lived by godly biblical behavior. Now, by the way, you won't find one that did everything perfectly, either in their teaching or in their living. But that was the constant, that was the normal, that they were true to God's word and they were true and godly in their behavior. Keep that in mind. Reflect on how that biblical faith controlled them. And that's the same thing that you ought to be encouraged by in your own life. Think of how biblical faith carried them in their leaving. There are a lot of people that are afraid of death. There are a lot of people that even the thought of dying is, is enough to just shatter their, their life. But there are many who know the Lord Jesus Christ as their own personal Savior and they, they face these things and they have a peace and a calm about them. And they just remain confident. They stay confident, constant in their faith and show confidence in their future. Now, i tell you what. And they weren't afraid of death. It doesn't mean that they were excited about the process of dying. It, the Bible tells us that death is still our enemy. And I tell you, death looks ugly as you look it in the face. But those who have gone through that, and some even suffered greatly. I remember a pastor friend of mine in Iowa. I went to visit him. He was dying of cancer in the hospital. And, he was a strong guy, and he had a 
thick chest, and I saw him rear that chest up in the air off the hospital bed in pain. And yet he had a peace in his heart because he knew he was going to be with the Lord. And he understood the grace of God to get him through what he was going through as he was going through those things. And never abandoned his faith. In fact, his faith became stronger. His trust became stronger in the Lord as he waited upon him for the grace that he needed. Are you confident in your future? If you had not lived through last night, where would you be right now? Are you absolutely sure that you would be with the Lord in heaven? If you're not, you can make sure today. You can repent of your sin and place your faith in Jesus Christ to save you from your sin because he died on the cross for you and paid the penalty for your sin and he rose again to give you life. If you'll call on him in faith, he'll save you from your sin and make you a child of God. And he guarantees you a place in his presence for the rest of eternity. And I would plead with you to make sure. Recall how biblical faith continues the same in the Lord. Now, verse 8 has been preached on a lot in various ways, and we even touched on it the last time I preached. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the, I believe what he's doing here is he's saying it's the same Jesus Christ that these people put their trust in, that we put our trust in, and that has never changed Jesus Christ is changeless in who he is in essence, in who he is in character, and in what he does. I tell you what, he was the savior of those past spiritual leaders. He's still the savior of sinners today. The same savior. It's the same sacrifice that pays for our sins. He is the same high priest that intercedes for those who put their trust in him. He is the same one who gives us the grace to live by day by day day. If you abide in him, he abides in you, and it, you'll bear fruit, because without him you can do nothing. It is the same Jesus Christ. Now, and nothing changes concerning the gospel. Nothing changes concerning the truth. You see, he is the changeless Jesus Christ who is the basis of biblical faith. Always has been and always will be. His person is the same. His provision is the same. His provision of salvation and grace. His power is the same to enable you. And, uh, and also as the authority. His purpose is the same. To save you. And to sanctify you. And to take you to be with himself. And his promises are the same. I will never leave you nor forsake you. All things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. That will not change. As you... Reflect on these things. Evaluate the benefits of the faith and faithfulness of past spiritual leaders. And then compare that to those who do not have the faith. And you'll find out there are no benefits on the other side. There is no hope for those without the faith of Jesus Christ. There is no help that's really meaningful and helpful. All the benefits are on the side of faith in Jesus Christ. All the real, true benefits. Listen, follow the faith of faithful spiritual leaders and remain steadfast in that 
faith. I would caution you one thing. He is not saying you ought to worship those leaders. That is not the message that he's trying to get across. He's trying to tell you to benefit from those leaders. Don't put them up on a pedestal where they don't belong. All the glory goes to God, to the Lord Jesus Christ. Shall we pray? Father, thank you for spiritual leaders that you've given us to share the truth, to show the truth, to give us examples to follow and to encourage us that it can be done and has been done, that people have stayed faithful in the faith. I thank you for my spiritual leaders. I pray that you'll make me more and more the kind of spiritual leader I ought to be. I pray for these people who are spiritual leaders in their homes. That you would make them more and more the kind of spiritual leaders they ought to be. An example that can be followed and should be followed because they follow Christ. I do pray for those who are not sure of where they're going to spend eternity that today... You would speak to their heart about repenting of their sin and placing their faith in the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, and calling upon him to save them. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. In closing, we're going to sing 533, the old-fashioned way. There's an invitation here. If you need someone to speak to about how to be saved, or some other spiritual matter that God has spoken to you about. We'd love to be there for you and, and open the scripture with you to pray with you. You come as we sing. You can always approach us later, but if you come now, you're committing to taking care of this, not putting it off and perhaps forgetting about it later. So as we sing, if you want that help, you come. 533, let's stand as we sing the old-fashioned way. <laughs>